Today, we are going to take a low-cost thermal camera adapter, and turn it into a microscope for thermal radiation. These types of thermal camera adapters are really very convenient. They are super compact, because the display, the power and even the software, are on the smartphone, and let's face it, pretty much everyone carries one of those around with them all the time. This is a fairly simple project, and pretty much anyone can complete this themselves. All of the parts are available on AliExpress, and the 3D printing requirements are fairly minimal. This, is what we are going to be making today. It can resolve features down to about 50 microns, and it doesn't need any changes to be made to the actual camera adapter, so there is no chance of breaking your precious thermal camera unit. This video is not sponsored by any thermal camera manufacturer, but for reference, we are using the Unity, UTI-260M. It is a mid-range device with a resolution of 256 by 192 pixels, and a frame rate of 25 Hz. Right, let's get on with it. Thermal cameras, give us new, and often interesting ways to see the world around us. Human eyes are all too easily deceived, when you can only visualize in such a limited amount of the electromagnetic spectrum. What is most interesting, is how light of thermal wavelengths interacts with matter, in ways that is often different to what we see with our eyes. This simple heat pad is a good example, the resistive heating element within the pad, is clearly revealed as soon as it is powered on. Some materials, which are transparent to visible wavelengths, will also pass thermal infrared rays as well, such as this polythene bag. But, if we make the polythene black colored, the visible light will be blocked. However, the thermal radiation can still pass unimpeded. Other materials, can be translucent to both visible and thermal photons, such as this sheet of tissue paper. This glass microscope slide, is highly transparent to visible light, but it is almost totally opaque to thermal photons. This presents a serious problem for our microscope project. To build a microscope, we will be needing some lenses, and clearly we cannot use a traditional glass lens. This glass magnifying lens is not only opaque to thermal rays, but it is also pretty reflective at those wavelengths, so in other words, traditional glass lenses are completely useless for this application. This small shiny disc, is made of a metal called germanium. Like other solid metals it is totally opaque to visible light, but for thermal infrared light, it is highly transparent. This particular germanium disc, has been formed into a suitable shape to be a lens. A lens for thermal rays. Germanium, is not the only material that is used for thermal infrared lenses. This one is made from zinc selenide, and is commonly used for focusing carbon dioxide lasers. Anyway, now we have some suitable lenses, let's get on and build our microscope. We are going to perform a few experiments, using this small halogen filament lamp as a heat source. We are running it at a very reduced power, this will make sure that we don't overrange the thermal camera module. The thermal camera, has its own optics built in, and this is the main challenge for this project. 
getting reasonable magnification, and maintaining the field of view is pretty challenging without removing the existing optics. We are going to keep our camera in one piece, and work around this limitation. The bare camera, has a minimum focus distance of about 15 to 20 centimeters. First, we will try out that germanium lens, and see what kind of magnification we can achieve using this lens alone. We will attach it to a piece of card, and make some measurements of the focal length, of the combined internal and external optics. As you can see, we get a pretty considerable increase in the magnification. It does have to be said though, that with just one lens, the effect is more of a macro lens, and not exactly a microscope. So, we decided to add another lens, and produced a 3D printed lens holder. Some of you might be able to notice some degree of foreshadowing, there are in fact positions for three lenses within our lens holder assembly. With two lenses in place, we can achieve significantly improved magnification, but we promised you a microscope, so let's add another lens. And here we have a three lens solution, and which doesn't impinge on the field of view. And now, I think we have a reasonable solution. The focal length is only about 10 millimeters from the outer lens, which isn't ideal, but if we want to improve on this, we are going to need to buy some pretty expensive lenses. Above 20 millimeters in diameter, these types of lenses start to get stupidly expensive. So, here is that tungsten filament coil again, the overall length of this coil is only 2.5 millimeters and the filament wire itself has a diameter of 50 microns, so, pretty good overall. Right, let's see what this thing can do. We have a small confession to make. Originally, we didn't create this thermal microscope in order to make a YouTube video about it, nor did we do it because we wanted to look closely at filament lamps. As part of the day job, this was created as a low-cost way to view the power dissipation of the top metal layer of a client's microchip. Obviously, we cannot show you any imagery from that project, it's covered by an NDA, so instead we will show you some other things that we have imaged. These are old school NPN power transistors, 2N3055s to be precise. This is a pretty arcane transistor, and the only reason we bought them, was to debunk a video by this chap. Mr. Double Barreled Murray Smith made a video where he claims to have made an alpha voltaic nuclear battery. We are pretty skeptical of his claims in fact we believe that he deliberately deceived his viewers. We are considering making a debunking video about it, if enough people show interest in the comments, then perhaps that video will get made. Anyway, back to the transistor. We removed the top casing and added base and load resistors, so that we could get this die to heat up when power is applied. Looking at the raw die under a microscope, we notice two things. Firstly the die itself doesn't have very many discernible features. Secondly, the semiconductor die is only 2 by 2 millimeters, so a microscope is clearly required to image the device. When we apply power, the whole die initially heats up pretty evenly, so the distinct features are not visible. But as heat flows begin to stabilize, and we get towards thermal equilibrium, the die features once again become more visible. This is a pretty useful technique. Modern IC design tools have very advanced thermal simulation capabilities. But at some point, every simulation model should be validated with real-world measurements. There are plenty of commercial microscopes available for this purpose, but these are often very expensive, and rarely achieve results that are significantly better than what we have presented here. This project cost us less than $35, the cheapest commercial solution we found cost over 5000 bucks, so a significant saving. This, is an old school optoelectronic device, basically it is a photodiode combined with an operational amplifier. 
we thought that we would load up the output stage and try and identify where the output transistors were on the die, by the temperature change. We made a little test board, which would allow us to adjust the load on the output of the device. We had a break the glass window, so that the thermal infrared energy could pass. Looking under a microscope, it is obvious that the main central area is the photodiode. Right, let's power this sucker up and see if there are any hot spots that are discernible with the thermal camera. Initially, everything is at the same temperature, so there isn't much to see. Gradually, the device begins to warm up, and more details become clear. It isn't terribly obvious, but there does appear to be a slightly hotter area of the die, which might be the complementary drive transistors of the op-amp. Well, maybe. So, we figured we would just crank up the power, and see if we could make this more clear. And this turned out to be a mistake. A mistake, that cost us $40. As was mentioned at the very beginning of this video, this really is a very simple project, and there really is no need to buy those single lens thermal macro adapters, when you can just build something better, like this. The 3D printing requirements are fairly trivial, and if anyone wants a copy of the 3D files that we created, either as the original SketchUp format, or as STL files, then feel free to drop us an email. The email address is on the channel page, just click here and solve the capture, and we should respond within a few days. We noticed that first surface mirrors, also are highly reflective to thermal infrared. These are mirrors that have the reflective coating on the top surface, unlike a typical bathroom mirror, where it is behind a layer of glass. As we now know, glass is almost totally opaque to thermal radiation. But, this opens up the interesting possibility of creating a thermal telescope. If there is enough interest in that project, perhaps we will try that next. Please do let us know in the comments, if that sounds like a good project to attempt in a future video. So, we have made a couple of different versions of this simple thermal microscope. The clip-on version is very convenient, and is very compact. But, we prefer the look of the fully enclosed version, it's a little more rugged, and frankly looks a bit more interesting. We would have liked to take the device performance a little further, but the lenses start getting very expensive once you try that. But to be fair, this little adapter already met the requirements we had for it, and our consulting project was very successful. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed our little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you think we deserve it, then please feel free to give it a like. And you could always hit subscribe, if you want to see more content like this. In a change from our normal practice, we have enabled YouTube advertising. We are saving up for a camera. All of the photography you have seen in our videos, has been captured using a cell phone, the limitations of which, is starting to limit the kind of content we can produce. We wish to express our sincerest gratitude to the following viewers, for their donations towards our camera fund. This is still a hobby channel, so we can say what we want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time. You now have, only a very short time, to choose the next video to watch.